Excellent. I had to start off with matter of Chen. Uh, you know, these are the January cases, always trying to talk the favorable cases on your podcast, on your, these interviews. Matter of Chen is the BIA agreeing with the overwhelming group of circuits, I think all circuits, that held that, you know, the continuous Nishavis, Pereira deficient NTA issue, held that a final order of removal doesn't stop the accrual of continuous physical presence, doesn't implicate the stop time rule, just like a notice of hearing doesn't implicate the stop time rule in the Chavez, just like a deficient NTA doesn't implicate the stop time rule, that's prayer itself, nor does a order of removal, because it's not listed under the statute. Oh, interesting. That's what I mean. And so you've got, I don't know, 100,000 non-citizens who've got final orders of removal who might not have had the 10 years when they were ordered removed, but do have it now. And so long as they have a qualifying relative, a US citizen or LPR spouse, parent, child, um, they are potentially eligible for reopening. That's when this that's when this is gonna all really come into play, potentially eligible for reopening and to apply for non-LPR cancellation of removal. Um, and wherever else there's a stop time rule that should also apply. So that's a matter of Chen. I mean, really agreeing with all the circuits that have said that that's the good the bad on matter of chen is like the you know the bia under this administration seems to always give and then also take a little <laughs> at the same time the bia then held in adjudicating whether reopening is warranted applying matter of quello as it always does and always should that the non-citizen has to establish prima facie eligibility for the relief well what does that mean we've always known that that means you got to submit the re relief application and show that you could warrant the relief. But in matter of Chen, the BIA seems to take a pretty hard line and so and say that Mr. or Mrs. Chen, I, uh, Mrs. Chen, need to establish pre and facie eligibility for relief as a matter of discretion and as a matter of hardship. And in addition to, of course, not having disqualifying crimes and having the 10 years. And so the the, the it seems like the BIA wants to have a mini removal adjudication or mini removal hearing in the motion to reopen itself and you know prima facie on good moral character and it's balancing it's doing all of this in the motion to reopen context held that miss chen didn't satisfy it on discretion on good moral character so really putting a high burden on motions to reopen even though it's agreeing with the other circuits and saying even though she got her 10 years because she's been here for a long time after the removal order still didn't meet it uh, the light there, though, is, and I, I'm actually using this argument in a motion I filed today, is, you know, the BIA in matter of Chen said a removal order, and this is just a paraphrase, a removal order doesn't implicate the stop time rule because it's not listed in the stop time statute. Fair mm -hmm. enough, right? A textual based argument. Well, you know, in matter of Fernandez, the BIA said that the, the DHS could could save a deficient NTA by doing some other things, but those other things aren't listed in the I in the NTA statute, INA 239A. So it seems the point is, is that now the BIA is adopting this very textually based analysis when it comes to NTA issues. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then there's a lot you can do with that because the statutes that refer to NTAs, they're, they're very clear. And if we're going to say if it's not listed, it doesn't count, then a lot of arguments can be made. And I-261, for example, which is used to uh, bring new charges of removability and removal proceedings, that's not listed at INA Section 239A. So how can that amend a deficient NTA? That kind of argument. Matter of Chen adopts that logic. I'm using it. Everybody oh, else cool. should too. Yeah, let us know how it goes. That's gonna be a fun pushback right there. <laughs> See what happens. I mean, you know, the, the deficient NTA thing, it's it's sometimes I'm making the arguments and it kind of feels a bit like a game, but it's a game with real world consequences. If yeah. you have a client who doesn't want to be in removal proceedings and DHS is not going to re-NTA them, that is their prerogative, then that that is a real world consequence from what is Sometimes a very silly argument, but it's a silly argument that the Supreme Court gave us five years ago and continues to give us.